sleeves. Um, as you guys mentioned, we've been talking about this for a long time, long time. Yes. Um, and it's finally here, which is super exciting. Um, the goal with sleeves was always to kind of lower the barrier to entry so that you didn't need a complete pair set. So you didn't need to collect every single card within a pack drop uh, within the alpha set uh, in order to earn prime rewards. Uh, we really wanted anybody who had any amount of cards to really be able to earn. Um, and so that's why we built sleeves. Um, what sleeves are, just to give a little bit more detail, is these little cards basically represent pools of cards, uh, which map to how Echelon Foundation has um, basically enumerated what a paraset is. So if you click into one of these, mm -hmm. you'll see the cards that basically comprise a, a paraset. And so in this case, the pack drop for special edition paraset has about 12 cards in it. Um, now what you can do here is really cool. You can go ahead and you can sleeve cards that you own. And so um, this seems absurd, but I actually own a hundred of the Cunning Sipian. No SDs. way. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no oh my way. God. So you could go ahead and you could lob in a bunch of these. <laughs> what a flex. If you wanted. Um, Holy shit. So just for kicks, we can go ahead and add one. Let's see if we have something in here. The, the pool yeah, no big deal. Have. I'll just rip off one of these from my hundo. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. So they're actually sorted by... Yeah, let's just add one of these. Okay. Cool. So what is actually happening here is there are basically two components within a sleeve. There are cards that are in the queue, or what we call sleeved, and then there are cards which are cached. Hmm. As we collect sleeved cards, as soon as our tool basically is able to complete a set, it will yeah. automatically cache a complete pair of set. So otherwise, what you can notice here is that the pool has three of each of these cards, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Once there's a one down this entire column, meaning that we have a complete set sleeved, mm -hmm. our smart contract will go ahead and cache that complete set for you. Got it. And okay. it will look for the first cards which are sleeved based on timestamp to complete that set with. So it okay. basically is valuable for uh, the community to go ahead and start sleeving cards sooner than later to reserve their place in line, more or less. Okay. Gotcha. So then the leftmost uh, column there, that is mm -hmm. that would dictate how many are actually cached exactly okay, so if okay. you go over here to pack drop six where we've actually completed two sets which is mm, great i see, see i see there you, you can go. actually see that you see two mm. sets are basically cached now mm -hmm. if i had a card which contributed to that you would see, see. one here okay so you would actually see hey i actually have one card and it's cached and i might have two that are sleeved for example so the shortcut is white icon is holistic it's global blue icon refers to your own assets. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Easy enough. Cool. Awesome. Is so there a... here. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, is there a way to easily dictate like where you might be able to get the most bang for your buck? Um, yeah. Or like if something's close to completion, how do I go ahead and slot something in? So there's two things. So first and foremost, we have a default sort on this page that if you connect your wallet, we will actually prioritize showing you which sleeves you have the most cards that are available to sleeve. Oh, I see. I so see. The page will go ahead and sort itself. And so you can see here, I have 187 uh, cards, which could be sleeved 93, so on and so forth. Um, just a handful. Um, mm -hmm. And then basically the next section would be um ones which you don't yet have cards mm. um we will be adding two more sorting options one which is based on uh yield so as you can see here each of these sleeves produces different yield relative to the cost of those cards okay. sure. and we'll add a, a third one which is um sorting based on missing cards so the amount of cards missing to actually cash that next incremental set Got so it. those are two new sorts that will be coming uh, shortly mm -hmm. right now we have this default which is ultimately which cards you have available and then you can also do by name ascending or name descending 
How often are you returning the projected set APY estimation? Yes, so we calculate this on the fly. Um, okay. I think that we do the calculation, I want to say every few hours. Okay. Um, but the way the calculation is done is this is just what a set will realize. So a singular set, what it will realize in prime relative to its right. cost. Okay, um, got it. The individual card APYs is something that we'll work towards in the future. Um, those gotcha, actually gotcha. are calculated using our rarity score. So something I didn't mention is that the more rare cards within a set will earn a commensurate amount mm. of rewards, meaning that if you sleeve a prime rarity card, you'll earn a lot more than if you sleeve a common card. Mm. Got it. And we do so, that all behind the scenes for you. Gotcha. It pays to sleeve those chase cards. Yes. And which is why we are currently searching or after basically on a hunt for art cards. Mm. Um, mm. If people on the stream didn't see the tweet storm that I went ahead and sent out earlier today, we're currently looking for, and I actually miffed this a little and, and wrote PD1, but we're actually <laughs> looking for PD2 art gotcha, cards. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. Um, and okay. so these are all prime rarities. And so we're looking for these remaining four, which would be a rock, Very cool. Brand, Dark Allure, and the EMP Shockwave. Well, I have okay. all of those. Perfect. <laughs> Damn, bro. Oh, okay. Wow, you're slanging, brother. You're slanging your Sudafed, man. Yeah. I see them in my wall. I don't know if they actually exist or not, but they uh, <laughs> they do seem to be there. How many Damn. Sudafeds does it cost to, to get an art card? I think 100. Sure. That's a good question right there. It's a pretty even exchange rate. <laughs> And I, I see really the I, I see the acronym APY uh, getting thrown around a lot. Is that anal penetration yearning or is that uh, d something else? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your anus will get penetrated 0.2% of the time. Holy Whoa! smokes. That's an incredible rate. What, Damn, yes. brother. What, what an APY. I, I, uh, <laughs> I know you're just farming for clips right now. <laughs> Don't, just, don't entertain just, him, just Rarity. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. We can't lose our chairs, okay? So don't feel like you have to enter entertain us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it actually stands cool. for, though? <laughs> no, but, but seriously, can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so <laughs> annual Andy, Andy percentage yield. So <laughs> Okay. Um, I, I didn't know if that, that was my cue or not. I didn't know if that was my cue. <laughs> yeah, is you the bit still so going the sort of stuff. thing? You never know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, APY stands for annual percentage yield. What that basically means is based on the cost of your assets, um, how much of that cost basis are you accumulating every year? Mm. Um, and so right now, the percentages are all quite low and lower than you might expect. Um, but this is due to the fact that um, Parallel is still in uh, closed beta. Um, and as we move towards launch, naturally more sinks will open up. So places where you can spend Prime. Sure. Um, and um, as those sinks open up and more players join, uh, the emission rates of these sets actually will fluctuate based on the amount of Prime that is spent in those sinks. So. Hopefully, as we open up to the public and Parallel starts to launch and put some marketing dollars behind the game, um, we'll see a lot more Prime being spent on everything from cosmetics to uh, artographs to um, pack drops potentially in the future. I know that there's been discussion about um, the team actually allocating Prime from pack drops towards um, Prime sinks in the future. So mm. there's a whole lot of opportunity. That's awesome. I mean, amazing stuff, man. Yeah. What, when it comes, I, I have so many questions. Um, when it comes to the earnings that you can actually get out of these cash sleeves, one uh, it obviously requires a completed set. So how often are those PDT rewards paid out? Paid out? Yes. So two things really quickly. First is, and if I open up one of these sets, um, as you stated earlier, there are two different types of states for your cards. Either they can be cached as a part of a complete set or they can be sleeved. 
Mm-hmm. Firstly, we allocate 90% of the rewards within a given pool to cached cards. Right. Makes so sense. if you happen to be first in line and you get a cash set in, you will be earning 90% of the rewards based on your card's rarity. Now, 5% is also allocated to sleeved cards, but that 5% is actually globally allocated. Mm -hmm. So even if you are sleeving a card in a pool which does not have a cash set, you are still earning 5% of the global accumulation of awards Mm. based on your card's rarity. So we didn't want to penalize things like art cards or card backs that might take a little bit longer to complete. Mm -hmm. We still want you to be earning. Okay. Um, And so the rewards themselves are actually paid out on a epoch system. So the first epoch is actually 45 days, meaning it will complete at the end of March. But moving okay. forward, they will be every 30 days and in sync with uh, the Paragon's Dow staking epochs as well. Gotcha. Very cool. And then yeah. as you earn that PDT, from my understanding, you can also stake PDT for prime rewards. Exactly. And I think a question mm. that a lot of people were asking was, hey, you're collecting prime how do i get my hands on prime and you have two options one a you take your pdt as you just mentioned and you go ahead and stake it and you can simply click this button once the epoch completes and we can do that all for you via multi-call you don't even have to touch anything we'll just automatically stake it for you on paragon's dow Mm -hmm. very simple very easy now there are people who might not want pdt or have concerns over pdt we happen to think it's a really awesome investment and super undervalued at this point in time but there are people who might not want to. And so you can go ahead and claim and you can swap that for prime. And the way that we actually calculate the PDT rewards is that we will actually use a moving average over the duration of the epoch um, to track the conversion rate between PDT and prime. And we use that to um, deliver PDT that is effectively worth the amount of prime that these sets are earning. Gotcha. So mm, that's awesome. Go ahead at the end of an epoch and swap for prime if, if that's your preferred thing we highly recommend going ahead and staking and earning even Very more. Very cool. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, this is such a, a huge unlock for PDT as well as as the the treasury and the ecosystem that you guys have established. So congrats to all of you, man. This is this is really seamless too from the the aspect of caching or well, I should say sleeving first, then, then potentially caching and then hopefully claiming and staking. That's the hope. We wanted to make this as easy as possible. Um, And the final thing I'll mention here really quickly to wrap things up is the plan is to go ahead and have the parallel client support all cards, which are cached or sorry, which are sleeved. Mm. And we actually have a timeline, which I'm allowed to share. We just got word from the team that it will be supported in the next month. It will be live. We do, they do need to deploy a patch to the client, which is why it might take a little bit of time there. Mm -hmm. So we hope that it actually comes a little bit sooner, but within the next month is the timeline I can. I can mention publicly. Okay. That's awesome. That was going to be one of my other questions. So that solves that. And that's, that of course stands for penile delivery timeline, right? (laughs) Exactly, dude. I'm going to, everyone knows that on, on these jokes. (laughs) I I played too, too much into them already. (laughs) Yeah. 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 He's, he's getting some notes on the side. Please rarity. Don't, don't uh, entertain them any further. The the key to an entertaining stream is to continue to do the same joke. Over and over. Keep driving it home. You keep it doing it. I can only imagine what my name will be next stream. (laughs) I've got a couple ideas, and I'm less and less syllables. Just gonna keep them in the brain. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, this is awesome, man. Really, really well done. What are some? I know we were talking in the green room about you know uh, product strategy and and how we, as as product designers and entrepreneurs and builders, we continuously add benefits to the people that use our platforms and the the tool sets that we design. What is something that's coming up in terms of uh, things that you can share for iterative improvements? I know you had mentioned the the filtering, for instance, that's a great one for APY. Mm -hmm. Um, But are there others that are on top of mind that you can share that you're looking forward to add to, to the sleeve experience? Yeah, I think there's one maybe short term and one maybe quite long-term that I'll share okay. or, or not make a nod towards. I think one shorter term improvement that I think everybody is maybe looking for is the ability to deposit cross pool. 
So naturally you might have, let's say, a bunch of cards in pack drop three and a bunch of cards in pack drop six. Okay. And you just want to be able to do that in a singular transaction. Right now uh, on the front end, yeah. you need to do those independently. Mm, sure. But we would love to enable you guys to do that in a singular transaction, mm. as well as potentially just help you um, optimize for sleeping as many cards as you can. And so those are some of the things that we will actually surface, um, hopefully in the short term, would be some buttons that would allow you to go ahead and max sleeve maybe three of each card mm -hmm. um, or things that allow you to build decks quite quite cleanly in client since you can use up to three cards typically. Um, maybe Very cool. that's a, a shortcut we might offer. Okay, so that's something awesome. short term. Something longer term and disclaimer, there's potentially... Uh, no supporting evidence that this will happen, but one of the things that we <laughs> went ahead and baked into this concept is ultimately our smart contract has just a mapping of ownership to assets. Um, and since we have so many cards and sleeves, there is a world where over time we can expand the yield opportunities available to sleeved cards. Hmm. For instance, perhaps when things are in sleeves, maybe they could be loaned out because since they're not I cashed. See. And right. we could actually build upon this in somewhat of a modular way to expand upon the yield opportunities afforded to sleevers. Yeah. So that's something that I think is far, far down the road. But just to give you guys an example of how we can kind of build on top of some of the building blocks that we're coming out with down the road. Amazing. I mean, it's it's such a good plan to for scale. Like if we if parallel turns out like we all know and hope it will, um, having paragons be the center of that conversation for lending assets to players that can't afford these is it just makes all the sense in the world. Absolutely. And I know that the community is chock full of good ideas and some wild ones too. I mean, please stop by the the discord and, and share your thoughts. We, we'd love to hear from you guys and we want to make sure we're building stuff that you guys find valuable and, and fun. Oh yeah, man. I've heard some pretty bad ideas from the community. <laughs> Oh, right. I thought you were going to say today on this on this conversation. This conversation has been pretty good, actually. But uh, <laughs> just on a, on a whole, I, maybe you shouldn't be asking for community feedback because there's a lot of dog water out there. <laughs> hey, man, we're here to tell the truth, and you're right. You're right. Rarity doesn't have to agree with you, but I'll say I'll say I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say. Speaking it. of which, does the community have any questions, or have we been pretty? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. One so came far. up. One came up that I was also thinking about, how are you guys thinking about expansion packs? Because currently there's no concept of parasets for Planet Fall or Aftermath. So mm -hmm. does that come into the fold? Is that something that you guys will still reward even if there aren't um, Echelon specific rewards? As of right now, we don't have plans to expand outside of the base set simply Got because it. there are no ongoing rewards for any of those parasets. Those are just collections which will receive a one-time claim mm -hmm. of Prime. Yep. Okay. Um, but who knows down the road that might change cool and are there other games like i know you guys are close with the watch and shrapnel if those games start paying out currencies um is there a future in which sleeves actually expands to other ecosystems as well maybe Ooh. okay <laughs> a koi maybe i like i like a koi maybe yeah we'll take a koi maybe yeah, any here day for of the that. Week, man <laughs> yeah hell yeah i like it Cool. Uh, I don't see any other questions yet. Just a bunch of tomfoolery in the chat. Go sleep. Do it.